Welcome back to the Grace and Andrew Yang Comedy Show. I am the star Charlotte My Grace. Out yes, to you, Highwood Chicago poet, Mr. Fax Machine Douglas. Mr. Douglas, we are getting reports that you once met uh, former President Barack Hussein Obama and his wife, uh, former First Lady Michelle Levong Nate Robinson Obama. Is this a myth or a fact? It's not a myth. It's a fact. So when and where did you encounter them? Um, well, as you know, Miss Grace, I'm a poet. Mm -hmm. And I, I uh, read a band, I uh, read a poem introducing a band in 2004, uh, uh, before Obama was anything more than some uh, local hotshot. And uh, uh, after the show was over, I was walking by and they just said to me, we liked your poem. Uh, did come again, did you say that he told you he liked poem? He liked my poem, the poem that I had read earlier. Okay. Uh, so they came to your uh, avant-garde show or whatever, right? Like you didn't invite them or anything. It was a big show at the Auditorium Theater. I used to I used to read for this uh, uh, sort of middle of the road rock band called Wilco in Chicago a lot, and they had a lot by middle of the road. It, it, it was just sort of like good music, but a little on the bland side. Uh, it, w it was the sort of music that, uh, uh, you know, people who work in the office all day liked a lot. Oh, okay. And they could, at, when they were done working at the office, they would come home and moderately rock out to this moderate rock tuneful rock music. Uh, I assume instead of with your children. Yeah, exactly. That's that's when you went into your uh, your adult den. Garage. Garage or you know your man cave or whatever. And you would turn Wilco on and moderately rock out a little bit and have a beer and then you'd go have dinner with your family. Oh, okay. So do they cook dinner as well, or is that a, you know, women's job? Uh, they probably ordered out on, on, on uh, one of those online things. Okay. They, uh, but, they you know, were, I mean, they... when you were out on the scene, this was ancient times, Mr. Fax. This was uh, almost in the previous century. Yeah. So, I doubt that they, you know, I highly doubt that they would have the technology uh, of that today offers for them to order food to go. Oh. Well, maybe they had a maid. I know I did, so. so I wouldn't be surprised. So, yeah, I mean, they would have liked you. Uh, who? The people or you Whoever and your mom talking about? Because <laughs> let's get one front straight here, okay? I own maids and I employ them. I've never, ever been a maid in 125 years of my life. I've never been one. So, Not even at the beginning? No. You were never a maiden, you said? No. That's that, that's kind of shocking to admit. Uh, what the hell are you talking you, about? You were, you said you were never a maiden, even as I a little girl. I never, you were never was a maid. A maid okay, 
I don't know where you got Dan from, but it's just like. Okay. Uh, anyway, okay, I see what we were talking about. Uh, so I assume that you did not expect to meet the Obamas at your show. No, they were, they were, they, this was in the auditorium theater in Chicago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you said that already. With a couple of 2,000 uh, seater, and they were basically the only black people there. So they were recognizable that way. Oh, and, okay. So even and, then, they uh, were, uh, they stood out to you. They stood out. And I remember them both being very tall and intimidating, friendly, but intimidating. I was at so that, intimidated that all I could do was say, thank you. At that moment, when you were standing face to face with Barack Hussein Obama and his wife, Michelle Levon Nee Robinson Obama, did you ever have any inkling that he would eventually become the president of the United States one day and be as glorious as he is today? Mm -hmm. I can't, I can't talk about that. It's too personal, Shyla. Facts, my but thank you for asking. Facts, but my, I, 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 will, I will say this I'd like much. to finish. Facts, my reporters have been telling me that you revealed how you were intimidated by the Obamas when you met them. Like, how were they scary? Like, were they not very nice to you? They were just very successful looking. Oh. And they were so successful they, I, they asked, do you have a book? And all I had was a crappy DVR of me reading some poems with just a magic marker with my name written on it, magic marker. And it looked so ghetto, as they used to say, that I felt embarrassed to show it to them. I've got to admit, uh, facts that does sound extremely pathetic. <laughs> It was pathetic. And and even though they looked very successful, it never occurred to me that they would rename the Stevenson Expressway after him. So knowing that you really had nothing to show for yourself, facts. When you were in front of these the Obamas, uh did it make you feel like you were worthless? Um, pathetic and worthless are two different things. Uh, it, it was, since when? It was more, it was more like social status, which is something I think you understand. Uh, yeah. Okay. I felt they clearly had superior social status. So you would say they were probably up here, whereas you were... Yeah, I can't even see that glove now. Yeah, I'm illustrating the uh, dichotomy between your social class and theirs. Those are some hard-hitting questions, Shyla. So, knowing that you were virtually uh, worthless in front of these people, uh, did you give them any memento to remember you by? Just a smile and a thank you. You were very nervous, I said. Hmm? No, I was not nervous. You were intimidated. Yes. So did you... Uh, Eva Rod, then one of your custom made poems, you know, the one that's uh, you keep bragging that you scraped by 10 years right in the belt. <laughs> well, actually, I, I did write a poem uh, when he got elected. Oh, might you called have? Barack Obama. 
Mark, you have I don't have it with me. It's not the best poem I ever did. Oh, critical. You really want to impress the Obama's arson. No, I didn't write it for them. But you just said you wrote uh, in their name, facts. I did. So then it would be for them. <laughs> okay. Once you put it that way. But you didn't you didn't give them even the poem, huh? I don't I don't think the poem I wrote was very good. I would I would even say it was a racist poem. Oh. Yeah, that's a big no no. The the main theme of the poem was uh kind of a waiter who was very good at serving multiple cups of coffee. And that kind of brings up the old the old fashioned idea of black uniformed waiters mm, I which is even before my time so I understand. wait before your time before my time as you know i'm how old am i, I again i forgot i'm i'm 98 to 92 so yeah let's not flatter ourselves here in fact you are 92 okay and, yeah uh i see your birthday is coming up so uh, we'll just say that you're not afraid. Okay. But anyway, I was just trying to say, uh, you should have lived him some because it could have been worth a small fortune nowadays, facts. I'm sure you regret not giving them anything. Uh, yeah, I guess I should have given them something to remember me by. And Mr. Fax Machine Douglas, do you think that the Obamas, with all the fame and fortune that they have achieved today, might possibly remember the likes of you? I hope not. Oh. But then you're not going to have anybody to call for favors. Yeah, but I won't have... Uh... I, I uh, uh, the next time he's looking around in anger for a, a cockroach to step on to take out his anger on, I won't be there. So, facts. It's, it's dangerous to live in the halls of power. <laughs> Facts, if you could have one more chance nowadays to see them, what would you say to them? Remember me? I mean, let's be honest here. How likely is it that you would even get a chance? I mean, literally millions of people want to meet the Obamas every day. You would need at least $400,000 to get Mr. Obama to make an appearance at your venue. And to think that you got to meet him back then for free. We all need memories to live on. You know, someday I'll be, I'll grow old and I, I can always say to myself, I was in the presence of the Obamas. So, I assume that you've never attended one of his rallies when he ran for president. No, but I did vote for him. Oh. And um, do you regret that vote or do you uh, appreciate and cherish that value uh, vote? No, he, he, he wasn't a great president, but the people he ran against wouldn't have been good presidents either, so it doesn't matter. Uh, uh, who were they? John McCain and Mitt Romney. They would possibly have been even worse than Obama was. Oh. So. 
but your Obama team- was, in, you know, Obama was sort of like Nixon, you know, not that great, but could have been a lot worse. Well, you know, Nixon resigned eventually. Yeah. And you were alive back then, so I'm sure you would remember that. Yeah, you know, the whole Watergate scandal. Yeah. Which made no sense whatsoever because there was no water that was ever involved. So I don't right. know who the hell uh, named that. But... They got to call it something. Right. So I assume that uh, after you voted for him, you never got a chance to see him in person again. Like not at an event or at one of his great speeches or anything. Uh, no. I completely understand. I mean, the tickets were probably too pricey for you anyways. Hmm? Well, I didn't take advantage of his cash for clunkers program, so I had no money. Now, many people out there have been claiming that former President Barack Hussein Obama is currently running his third term as president, Mm -hmm. even though he's not in the White House. How do you feel about these claims, facts? I think it's very possible. I think I think there'll be many hundreds of books written about Obama in the future. Not all of them complimentary. Oh. And let's say that Obama runs for another term in the future. Uh, would he get your vote? Uh, no. And why is that? Well, two terms is enough for any president. Uh, it didn't seem like it was enough for FDR, Mr. Franklin <laughs> Delano Roosevelt, so. It wasn't enough for Obama either, apparently. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I don't know. So, uh, do you know much about his daughter's facts? Oh, that's right. I forgot he has daughters. Uh, no, let me get this straight. I'm you sure were aware enjoying... that he had children. No, he had children. I'm assuming they're enjoying themselves in Switzerland or something. Uh, I think his eldest daughter, or the young, I don't know, but one of them went to Harvard which is uh, very lame. Yeah, that's right, that's right. And I also hear that they're not on your best behaviors. At least that's what the uh, tabloids are reporting, so. That doesn't surprise me. Do you think that growing up in the White House is a positive environment for any, you know, raising children? No, I don't think so. And why is that? Uh, well, for one thing, you're renting. It's not your house. So they probably felt ashamed that they didn't have But the White House is the house of the president. That's right. But, so how are they renting it? Uh, you? Oh, yeah. I didn't mention your hair yet today. What about it? Oh, it's nice. It's very corn. You you kind of look like the scarecrow from The Wizard of Oz in a good uh, way. Well, thank you, Fox. Uh, this took three hours of sitting in that salon chair. Wow. Did, did you, uh, were you awake all that time or were you able to get some beauty sleep? Um, I sleep during the day. So, uh, by the time I was at the salon, it was already at seven in the evening oh, hours, okay. though. Uh, now I had my beauty sleep, you know, it's 
time for other people to do their jobs by then, so. Well, I mean, it's important for you to look good. I mean, there are literally dozens of people watching this, so. Uh, yeah, soon to be thousands, so. <laughs> yes, you have said so. Yes, and uh, I say, I want, I get. Remember that, facts. What's that in Latin? How the hell should I know? <laughs> I don't speak, I thought it was... Uh, yes. I speak English. Okay, folks? <laughs> if you say so. What, do you speak this Latin language? I mean, it's a dead language for a reason. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, well, okay. then again, I mean, you are you are very very old, facts. So it's not surprising that you speak, uh, or you might hint to Whoa. speak dead language. Yeah, there were a few Latin speakers in my childhood, but not many, mostly priests. So. Uh. So thank you, Fax, for sharing your encounter with the Obamas. Um, I'm sure many people who will watch this will appreciate you for allowing them to live vicariously through you. That's right. Uh, and we can all be uh, we can all be next door to a legend, can we? No, especially now when said legend is charging four hundred thousand dollars to make an appearance that's a lot that's a lot of money i don't think he's worth it but who is i four hundred thousand mm dollars -hmm. have you got any takers yet well, I live in Antarctica, so, you know, I'm a very, very busy woman, so, yeah. It takes a lot to book me for a show, facts. So, when you get the chance to talk to me, it's an honor. I'm sure many penguins would agree with you. Yes, so anyway, with that, my name is Shyla May Grace, and you are watching the Grace and Andrew Yang comedy show. Goodbye.